What's up, everybody? Welcome to We Have Cool Friends, the cool show where we interview our cool friends about the cool things they're doing. I'm Greg Miller, and this is Cameron Cuff. How's it going, man? <laughs> it's good. Cameron, you are uh, a first for We Have Cool Friends, I want you to know. The first like returning guest, right? No like, way. Yeah, of course. You were, of course, on the Game Over Greggy Show, episode 226, mm-hmm. April 6, 2018. Hard to believe that's more than a year ago. That is wild. Because when I was running through of like, oh man, like we're going to catch up and talk. But so far the shows have all been very much like, introduce yourself. Who are you? The audience sure. doesn't know you maybe. Audience knows Cameron Cuff. You know what I mean? Of course, star of Krypton. Seg L himself. But more importantly for this audience, kind of funny best friend. That's true. That's true. We've talked about that before, of course. You were, uh, mm-hmm. I remember when you started following me and I was like, who's this verified guy? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what is he? What? And then you, you DM me like, I'm working on a Superman show. Like, <laughs> that's going to suck. That'll be terrible. The universe is a strange place. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, so that's what I like to do for We Have Cool Friends. If somebody doesn't know and they've missed you, how do you describe yourself? What is the nutshell version of Cameron Cuff? Um, that is a very good question. I just say I'm, I'm Cameron. I do a, a TV show called Krypton, uh, which is on sci-fi. It's a Superman TV show. And in it, I play uh, the younger version of Superman's grandfather. It's set 200 years before the birth of Superman. So sure. that's where you might have seen me before. Might have. And if not that, you've, you've been on Game Over Greggy. You were on the mm. old morning show. You came and you did the kind of funny panel at RTX London. I did, it's yeah. you had a beard. It, indeed. And uh, th- that was really good fun. Um, and then if you, if you haven't seen me in those, there's a, a very fine selection of, of very, very independent British and Irish television shows. Uh, and or fringe theatre, which only my mother has seen, so you <laughs> probably wouldn't know me from that. Now, I'm surprised you broke out, because the thing about it, of me course, too. is that <laughs> once you start showing up on these British TV shows, that's it. You're just there the whole time. Oh, yeah. I don't know yeah. if you've noticed, there's only like 24 working actors in Britain, and they're on the same thing all the time. That's why Professor McGonagall, she's just in everything. You know she's gonna, yep. you're going to run into her. Maggie Smith, yeah. Exactly, she's, yeah. she's an institution. She's exactly, brilliant. exactly. Yeah. But you broke out. You got out there. And it granted you to go to Ireland. That's yeah, how you absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Well, no, that was that was that was where I trained. That was where I went to drama school, Ireland. And, and I forget—is that why you went there? We were talking about this earlier, right? Of yeah. like you, you know, you born born over there in the UK. Yeah, in London. Yeah, yeah. You come over here for ten years, eight years. What I was, was I was in I was in America for eight years and sort of bouncing around New England, like Massachusetts, sure. and stuff like that. So my and, dad's from Boston. And then you so. went back. To and then I, then I went back to, to Ireland to go to drama school because uh, in America there's a lot of really good sort of acting classes and stuff like that but conservatory Drinking style Drinking age though That's what yeah, got there you There you go absolutely right? You have to in <laughs> Ireland especially it's like exactly. yeah, if you can see over the bar they'll serve you so <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So, and then you went, went over there and then because like, you're super young too that's the other annoying thing about you How young are you? 26 God damn it man. Kevin What do we do with our lives? You know what I mean? Barrett, how old are you? 24. I see you. Hey! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, keep it down over there. You know what I mean? Is 29 that far away from 26? Oh, yeah. They, I think about how close you are to 30. They wouldn't even, they, when, when Cam hits 30, they're not going to put him on TV anymore. Oh, yeah. God, no. right. You know what I'm I mean? Done. I'm done. We'll have to hire him over here. Put him on some stuff. <laughs> Give him his old his thing over here. Well, I'm excited to see what's happened to you in the past year, Cameron. Yeah, for sure, but first, man. of course, I need to tell everybody this is We Have Cool Friends each and every Monday on YouTube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe, now including Spotify. Yeah. We Woo! bring in our cool we friends from around the internet to talk to us and hang out with us and catch up on their lives. Uh, please, of course, uh, for housekeeping, subscribe to this show on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you get it, and then go to the other platforms. Uh, it helps to get this new baby show off the ground and get it out to people. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Robin GL, Alec Bobco, uh, David Mintel, Antman0208, and DJ Kenta. Today we're brought to you by Postmates and Quip, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, Cameron Cuff. Greg Miller. More than a year later. When mm-hmm. you when you came here last time, mm-hmm. Krypton was done for season one. Yep, you know what I mean. Yep, but you were you were you were getting ready. You knew season two was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Things were going to be going on. Mm-hmm. We're more than a year later. How has everything changed? Everything's changed considerably. <laughs> it's 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 very weird. Like my my life is. I mean, it's it's not it's not so much so that I'm used to it now. Yep. It's just now things have. You know, I'm further down the rabbit hole than I was, and especially since I moved to America, I moved to Los Angeles this year. How long ago? Yeah. Uh, March. So okay. it was. It was. So we filmed season two from September to March of, of last year. Uh, so last year and early this year, and then we wrapped on March second. I was home for in London for a day, March third, and then I moved to LA March fourth. Jeez. Um, so it's been a very sort of rapid, you know, um, you know, adjustment cycle. But yeah, it's it's been great. It's it's it's. The, and the thing is about Los Angeles that 
London is a city in, in which sort of everything happens. Like it, it, there's not just entertainment, it's a whole bunch of different industries and stuff like sure. that. So it's very easy to sort of uh, escape from that or do different things. Um, in LA, it's all the industry and it's all there. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm sort of networking in a way that I hadn't been before and, and people know me and I'm not used to that. Yeah. Um, but it's exciting and it's cool and it's, it's really, really fun. And I get to do stuff that I hadn't, like I went on Kevin Smith's podcast, which I would never have been able to do. I went to E3, which was amazing. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's stuff that's all very new to me and very exciting. But yeah, it's definitely different. Has it? Does it feel like? Does it feel normal yet? Because that was the thing when we talked to you last time. When mm -hmm. here it was, you know, okay, people are starting to recognize you more, right? You're going to Comic Con, you're doing yeah. panels, people get that. But here we are, you know, season two now mm -hmm. for you, wrapped or whatever, still yeah, yeah. rolling out, obviously on sci-fi. Um, is it? A normal do you consider yourself now i'm i'm a tv star and like i i'm this nerd culture guy that i can go around la and everybody knows me it's it's no and i i hope i never do yeah because i think the thing is i i love it and and there's there's a there's a lot of people in it who, who, who can be kind of cynical about it and i and i really enjoy it and i love it in a different kind of way and i think part of that is because i was a fan of it growing up sure um so no it it, it doesn't it doesn't feel normal and it, it, it still kind of feels like a crazy dream. Um, but that's a good thing. And yeah, I like that. Yeah. And I want to hold on to that for as long as possible. The trick has been for me is about trying to enjoy it more. Yeah. You know, if I'm being completely honest, like the season one filming season one of Krypton for me was really difficult. Um, not because anyone made it difficult. It was a wonderful experience and I did have a lot of fun making it, but I just didn't feel like I belong there. I, I, really? I, I cause it, I got so lucky. And I, as I said, I was starting, you know, in, in theater and, and British TV and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden to do this a Superman TV show sure. where I was the lead it is wild. And yeah. of course I had crazy imposter syndrome and, and I didn't feel like I deserved it and to a degree still don't. But I think that the trick for me has been this year is about trying to enjoy it more. Sure. It's about really trying sure. to be in that moment and, and love every second of it and don't be so worried about it you know yeah, yeah. I, I think season one i was so focused on getting it right and and giving it everything that i had that i sort of i i was i was sort of depriving myself of the experience of it to a degree and season two for me my motto going in was have fun have so fun every second what does that mean does that mean like taking a breath in every scene and like looking around and be like i'm here and this yeah, is the thing i think it's the kind of thing where uh, it, I always want to do as well as I possibly can, which is not a bad instinct. But if you're yeah. an actor, sometimes it can be. Okay. It's like if you, if you go into something thinking, I want to be good, this really, really has to be good, it can be kind of poisonous because then you become self-conscious and that's the worst thing that can happen to you as an actor. So for me, before every single take, I would just say, have fun, remember the stakes, this has never happened before. Sure. Which is just, it's acting 101, it's the most basic principles, but it's just like, play with it more. It's called playing a character for a reason. So just enjoy yourself. This is Superman, this is meant to be fun. Gotcha. And I sort of decided that it doesn't matter how good your performance is or how good your work was, if you were miserable doing it, then what's mm. the point? Mm. You know, if you didn't, I, I'd, so for I'd, season one, were you too much in your head and you're trying to like nail every line the way it was written and that's the thing? hundred okay. percent. And it was, it was just the kind, and it was, it was really, I was, I was letting myself indulge in those thoughts of, I, I need to earn my place here. Sure. And, um, and not in a good way in, in, in a way that was sort of very, um, kind of like emotionally abusive to myself. Yeah. Um, and, and this year was much more about enjoy, you, you did the first season and people liked it and you, yeah. you've, you've earned the right to do a second season. So enjoy it this time have so much more fun and and i have to say it it, it shows you know in in all of it sure you know so when you're talking about season two and you're gonna have fun right and you mm -hmm. talk about like all the cool stuff krypton gets to do like you're yeah. giving doomsday a a, a non-nonsensical backstory like hey yeah. here's a yeah. really interesting yeah, yeah, reason yeah. doomsday's doomsday uh we're introducing jor-el and revealing all that stuff and right yeah, how yeah. that all works out at what point in the have fun mantra did you decide you're gonna cock your arms like henry cavill when you went to fight lobo uh, that was something that actually started in season one. Yeah. So the first scene in which you see me as Seg, um, it's the bar fight scene. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, it's, it, it's revealed that it's a con, that Seg was trying to fight those guys for as long as he could, as opposed to actually beat them. Sure. And uh, he wins money because of that. So it's a gambling ring, basically. Yeah, yeah. And um, after that, Seg looks at his, his partner in crime, Cam, and gives him a wink, which is a tribute to George Reeves, because mm. he would always, at the end of every episode, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. well, thanks to Superman, you know, and yeah, yeah. do that. So that was my tribute to that. So I thought in in the whole idea of having fun, let's try and bring more of that in. Because again, it's it's Superman. It's a really, really joyful thing. Um, and uh, when we were filming 
So the first the first two weeks of Krypton this year was in the forest with Lobo, yeah. which was immensely fun. Awesome. And, and the whole thing was so because it's a new character and and you know he, they're developing a Lobo spinoff, which is no surprise. But we kind of knew that this was going to be a big thing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we played it far looser than we had ever before. And 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 the showrunner was there, our writers were there, and they were coming on with ideas, and we were coming to them with ideas, and we were just having a lot of fun with it. And um, it was the kind of thing where the, the the Mission Impossible Fallout trailer had just been released at sure. that point in time, and every and then the the um yeah Henry thing. Cavill does the thing Go. where he cocks his arms and a beard grows, <laughs> <laughs> and and I already had the beard, so I, I decided I was halfway there, um and uh, and it was just one of those things that did sort of spur at the moment. I, I knew that Lobo and Seg were going to fight, so why not do that? And and everyone laughed. Said, yeah, that's great, do it. Yeah, because yeah. it's the kind of thing where it's like, and you saw it a little bit in 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 Justice League. It's like where they use the old Superman theme and stuff yeah. like that. And like I think DC are very good. Uh, about sort of saying like, hey, this is a massive legacy of awesome stuff. Sure. We, we have so much stuff to play with, so we might as well give a nod where we well, can. Well, that's the most exciting thing about it. I mean, because again, if somebody didn't know, you're a DC nerd as, as well, as versed as myself. Mm. And so that's our favorite thing to do when we talk about it. That's what this will turn into. But I think that's what's so exciting right now about where DC is, is that I think they took a lot of lumps to get here. But now that yeah. they're here, they get it. Of like, yeah cool we can play with these things we can have the stuff in like all the stuff that's happening like first off last year's crossover on the cw where they're going to smallville through the portal and they play the smallville song even amazing. though we weren't in tom yeah, welling yeah. smallville universe awesome amazing and, and then yeah, this yeah. year to be like all right you know what yeah brandon out's gonna play superman again yeah. and it's kingdom come superman like they're finally getting it that they don't have to walk this line so it was i was at comic-con last week and um I, I'd met Brandon a couple times and he's the nicest guy in the Isn't whole he, world. He's the greatest. He's the, he just is Superman. Yeah. Like he, he fully is. He's the nicest, kindest guy. And um, I was doing a press thing and I was doing a photo shoot and they saw that Brandon was the next up. So yeah. we came in, we did these photos together and I had, that was the day they announced that he was coming back as Superman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, I hadn't heard because I was doing press rounds and he came in and said, guess what? I'm playing Superman again. I was like, dude. And I was, I was so happy for him because I, Superman Returns uh, gets a lot of hate, but I genuinely think Think that Brandon on screen is one of the best Superman. Dude, ever. he crushed that role. He was and amazing. it was the thing of like, I, I think, you, uh, of course, to sit there and critique the movie and talk about it, like, was it what we needed at the time and yada yada. That's a different conversation. Yeah. yeah. To be like, hey, we're making a sequel to Superman two. Yeah. We need a guy who can come in and do Christopher Reeve yeah. and do him justice. Yeah. Do yeah, Superman yeah. and like, you watch his Clark performance, you watch his Superman performance. Like, yeah. he's he's crushing it in he's terms amazing. of what they asked him to do. And there's a lot of moments in that movie. <laughs> this is now becoming a Superman Returns podcast. But um, that's how kind of. Funny words, you know, <laughs> yeah. Everything is one step away from me to Superman Returns podcast. <laughs> but there's that wonderful moment where he's flying with Lois and she's just written that article why the world doesn't need yeah, Superman. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's there looking over the city with Lois and he says, you say that the world doesn't need a savior, Lois. But every day I hear people crying out for one. Yeah. And the way he delivers that line you can see that he hurts for these people totally and that he feels their pain too and he wants to do something about that right. which is one of the most superman moments on screen of all time yeah. for me and i think you know there's a lot of there's a lot wrong with that movie for sure but if you see it as the end of the christopher reeve richard donner saga yeah then it's a great Superman movie. Yeah, it's it's one of those that I feel uh, similar to right now with the whole hashtag release the center cut thing, right? Like yeah. the next thing for that I'm excited, I think, and I think will happen is really for DC to embrace the fact that cool when we leave a thread in a movie that doesn't go anywhere, we can do a comic book, and we yeah. cause audiences are smart enough now where they can go, you know what, Zack Snyder, right? Your com finish your thing this way, right? What yeah. would have that have been in the same way? I would adore someone to write in you know, the hey here's what superman returns to could have been yeah here because like yeah. at the end when he realizes he has that his son and he flies over there and he gives the same speech that jor-el mm -hmm. gave him it's like that like it took a while to get there yeah too long in that movie to get yeah. there and we didn't punch enough stuff but we're there now yeah. and i'd love to see what that dynamic would have looked like in the next one right? 100 and it was a really bold new idea and yeah. i think i mean you see that in the stuff that tom taylor does right it's like yeah. let's oh, yeah. we've got these awesome characters to play with and this is to a degree with krypton as well it's like we have these stories and these characters why not just play with it let's let's yeah. do our own thing with it and like i remember a couple years ago i'm not sure if it's happening anymore but i remember the the, the dc animated movies which i think are pretty great yeah. generally oh, yeah, yeah. um they were talking about producing unreleased scripts no, like so, the Kevin Smith Superman sure, story. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. love to. Are have you seen kidding an me? Yeah, form. totally. 100%. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is, I just even if that was a comic, right? Yeah, like, just take 100%. it and put it out that way. Like, and that's what I hope they do, especially with like the DC Universe and the app and all that jazz, right? Of, of like, you know, it's cool they're doing the not safe for work Harley Quinn show, right? Yeah, sucks. Their scarecrow stinks. 
Oh, yeah, Rahul yeah, Kohli, yeah, yeah, terrible, yeah. bless him. Terrible. He, he, you know what I mean? He, he tries. He tries. He's tries. just adorable. <laughs> yeah. But just hang it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Funhouse needs you. They're always looking for D-list talent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's so much cool stuff, and I think that we're there finally. Especially if you look at like what you know is happening with like uh, MCU Phase Four, where yeah. it's like, guess what? There's a what if show. Yeah. Like oh, people yeah. are finally like, guess what? It, just explore with it. Just yeah, take yeah. it all and play with it. It's it's gotten to the point where yes, comic book continuity is really convoluted. Yeah. But actually, through all of these movies coming out, a general mass audience understands the concept of a multiverse and time travel within that multiverse right. which I would have thought like when I was a kid I was like there's no, no way. way there's no, no way. chance yeah. and now it's like on TV we're getting two Supermans on screen at the same time yeah that's yeah. wild and that was the thing of like I always try to explain to people and I know it's hard but being a nerd as long as we have well me you're young yeah uh, I remember the, the like having to explain. I, I got bullied for liking comic books too I was there I was there before co- before comic books were cool I remember when Batman Begins was pe- coming around yeah and people were like well how would they and I'd be like I hope they get to the Joker how would they do the Joker they killed them I'm like well no the the Burton movies aren't these yep. movies yep. and it was so hard to explain to people like now you're talking about it people the, get it the endless bat nipple jokes yeah right yeah jeez you yeah. can't get away from it you know what I mean yeah. always a pain it's a mistake though right we can agree it was a mistake they shouldn't have nipples agreed yeah sure it's a suit it was a suit over his body yeah. nipples was an interesting <laughs> choice but god bless Joel Schumacher you know what I mean he had to do what he had to do but I, I, and one of the movies for me that really hit home how complete this transformation was in terms of comic books to screen was mm. Into the Spider Us. Oh yeah. Which I think is the best comic book movie since The Dark Knight. And it sure. it was absolutely incredible. And again, the idea of the multiverse, but the thing I've always loved about comic books is it's these grand concepts, these epic stakes, but with emotional connections. Sure. It's all about trying to be the best you can be and not necessarily feeling like you understand who you are but it's about that journey. And I think they really nailed it with that movie. Oh my God. It was perfect. That movie hits on so many levels. And for me, it was the thing of sitting there and being like, I'm watching Miles Morales and Spider Gwen on in a movie theater right now. You want to go back to what we're talking about Mm -hmm. of like when we were growing up and it was like, every Superman movie is failing to hit, right? They're only yep. making bad. And like, it was like to get that nerdy with it, to get them on the screen. Amazing. So cool. Let alone, I was, I tweeted about this the other day cause I had done some, I was, I tweeted and then I went to bed and I was like, but like into the spider verse, just thinking about it, I can start tearing up again. Cause I yeah. cried multiple times, but like oh, yeah, yeah. Miles's message at the end of that or like anybody like, wearing the mask, could be you Spider-Man. could wear the mask. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then like on top of it, like, we talk about like the leap of faith from it, right? Yeah. Him springing off the glass and that the way it sticks perfect. to him because he still doesn't believe in himself. You're like, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, it was like, so perfect. And and also I've visually, I've never seen a movie like that. 100%. It was animated beautifully, but going back to Superman, that's, that was the message that I always loved growing up that I don't think a lot of people get about Superman and some right, like Tom Taylor, I think gets it sure. for example, but uh, and Jeff Johns gets it for sure. But it's the kind of thing that, Everyone thinks Superman is perfect, and what they don't understand is that Superman is trying to be Superman as much as anyone else is. Yeah. He he loves the idea of Superman. He wants to be Superman, right. and he loves being Superman. And and Superman is an aspirational character for him as well. Is that he's just he's Clark. He's just a guy who can do these incredible things. Yeah. And that to me, the message is like I I can do these incredible things, and that makes me want to be a better person too. That's so human. He's the yeah. most human character. That's what I'm um, dude. You, you know, we're on the same page about it, but of exactly course. right that. Yeah, he's that's why I love Superman is that he is Clark Kent from Smallville and he is trying to make mm-hmm. this thing happen and the, different interpretations twist that enough. But like, yeah, there was a great one, not in the last years, but the year before that, I believe the DC holiday spectacular issue that I was put out of yes. like the short little stories where there's that awesome one where it's Clark in Bibbo's pub. And oh, he's yeah. talking trash yeah, yeah, yeah. on Superman and Bibbo's finally like, what is your deal? Every yeah. year you come in here and talk down to Superman and I have to set you straight about who Superman yeah. is. Yeah. And it's like such a great thing of like, it's Clark venting all his own personal, I'm not good enough things yeah. about Superman. Yeah. And then Bibbo being there like, what are you talking about? Superman's not that at all. He's yeah. this, that, and then it's like, oh my God. And, and that's the thing that always gets me about Superman. It's like, everyone's like, he's like, oh, he always knows the right thing to do. It's like, he doesn't. He yeah. just tries. Yeah, yeah. He just tries and he fails as much as anyone yep. else. The, uh, I think, you know, one of the moments that always stands out to me as a fan is that uh, Superman the animated series the you know two part pilot that was the thing right which is one of the best Superman movies of all time right and yeah. when he shows up and the plane's crashing the first time and he grabs it and by the wing right yeah, or the it, tail maybe yeah, and, it falls the, off. and the tail and it just keeps going he's nice holding the tail he's like nice job Clark yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, like, you know what I mean it's like yeah. such a brilliant move it's so great yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for sure. and I love the fact that like Comics, you know, we always make jokes about it, but it's true. Like when we're down at Comic Con and the signs of the popular arts, right? Like yeah. it's like this thing of like, co- there's so pop culture at the moment yeah. that I love the fact that you're fi- you're getting different spins everywhere of it that are giving people new glances into it. Where I'm always yeah. talking about like 
why I love Superman, right? Of like, he, absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? Mm. But not this guy. Yeah. This guy can handle it, and he's because of the moral fiber of the Kents yeah. and like who he is, that he's yeah. not going to use it. For, he, he could do any, he could rule the world, but instead he goes and he wants to live among us and learn to yeah. be, be a person. Like the boys right now, watching Homelander, right? Yeah. Who I've read, obviously, through when I read the boys, but like mm. watching him on screen, I think he's giving so many different people a glance at. Oh my God! Like Superman could suck. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. That's right? what makes him so special. Exactly. You know, and and like, uh, or even you know, the Watchmen shows coming out. Like Doctor Manhattan too. is one of the most fascinating characters because he gains ultimate power and in doing so, completely loses his touch. Yeah. About what makes him human. Yeah. He completely is divorced from reality because he sees time as being non-linear. Yeah. And it's it's like, what if Superman was deeply, deeply depressed? Yeah. That's Dr. Manhattan. And it's, it's, it's an incredible, I mean, Watchmen is just incredible anyway, but we're getting a Watchmen TV show. Uh, I know, like, right? And it, it looks and, amazing. And that was the other thing. That was what caught me off guard is that very similar to when they announced Krypton, I was like, who wants a prequel? Yeah, uh, yeah, what yeah. are you talking about? I've never been interested yeah. in Krypton. You guys are doing such a Elseworlds take yeah. on it of like anything can happen and this yeah. is what we're going to do. And the, the, I, I, so I went on, on Kevin Smith and Mark Bernardin's podcast. They've God, very kindly name advised dropping. me. Yeah, you know, sorry, I'll pick yeah. those up. Um, <laughs> uh, but they so they hadn't seen the show like a lot of people yeah and um, they they thought it was you know this, the you know Superman's grandfather Adam Strange comes back in time and says hey you know Brainiac is, is coming to destroy Superman's legacy he's trying to you know the Terminator it essentially yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that was never what the show was and, and the thing is what the show is about really and what season two is about is that General Zod saves Krypton that's what the show is. Is that episode five of season one? Spoilers. Uh, is you had your chance. You had your chance. <laughs> um, but uh, so Seg and, and Lighter Zod are in a, have a have a secret love affair, and and he gets kidnapped by this man uh, in episode four. And this man knows about the future. He knows about Brainiac. He knows about Superman, and he knows who Seg is. Yeah. And Lighter rescues him, and this man faces Lighter and says, "Hello, mother." So. And it's revealed that General Zod has come back in time and Adam got it wrong. So Adam comes in and says, we have to kill this man. I got it wrong. It's not Brainiac who's come back in time. It's him. It's him. I know it. And, uh, the, and the funny thing is, is that Adam never told Seg that Krypton is destroyed. He never told Seg that Krypton dies, yeah. that it has to die for Superman to live. And everyone knows, you know, in, in General Zod's time, that Brainiac always came back to Krypton. He always came to take Candle. Um, so basically the show, the, the second half of season one and the beginning of season two is General Zod saves Krypton. Yeah. And it's an Elseworlds story about what if Zod got what he always wanted. Yeah. Um, and that's a really, really awesome idea for a TV show. Oh my God, totally. Yeah. But yeah. It, it kind of, it so painted you guys in a corner. Yeah. Right? Because you can't come on and say that because that's, yeah, that's a big kicker in the story. Absolutely. So you need to get there. So yeah. it's a, Krypton prequel where everybody's yeah. like, well, I know what happens. Yeah. I know, I know he gets off, yeah, and I know okay, exactly. Blow up and it, no, but like, and also the you know it, it shows General Zod in a completely new light because as a villain, he's always been honest about what he wants, and yeah. he's extended his hand to Kal El so many times. Um, but all he's ever wanted was to to save his people. Yeah, you know, and 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 to save the planet, uh, and and to see sort of Seg and him talking about that and talking about Jarrell and saying like, yes, I'd never took any pleasure in in being Kal's enemy. But he sided with the humans over us, these people who are obsessed with war and hatred and greed. Yeah. He sided with them in, instead of our people. And uh, you feel for him. You understand where he's coming from, sure. which is which is a really, really awesome take on the character. And I know I'm, I'm biased, but Colin Salmon is my Zod now. Dude, he's, he's killing it. Are brilliant. you kidding me? He's crushing he's it. He's truly, yeah, truly yeah. brilliant. I love working with him. Um, and it's a wonderful sort of Xavier Magneto relationship they have is that not dissimilar from jor and and Zod, they are friends and they care for each other and their ideals are actually not dissimilar but the methods they would use to get to that place are completely different yeah um and it's a wonderful complex relationship it's a really good show you should check it out yeah <laughs> have you seen more and more people coming to it yeah like the audience is growing yeah it's it's been great and and the amazing thing is that we have a really dedicated audience who are wonderful and um you, you know uh, i know you guys say it all the time but, but if you ever want to come up to say hi or recognize me and you like the show please do it's awesome like everyone i've met so far has been really really lovely and the thing is the fans ask the best questions yeah they genuinely do because like uh, uh, the journalists are great as well but they ask the more general questions like oh, what does it feel like to play superman's grandfather which is awesome but 
the fans are invested in the story yep. and, and they ask you about where it's going to go and what you want to do and, and what it was like filming this bit of it. And that's always fun to talk about. And the thing is, I was a very, very lonely nerd growing up. I never had any friends that I could talk to about comic books. So I've been saving up these conversations <laughs> for years. Yeah. Uh, so if anyone wants to come up to me and talk about comic books, please do, because I love it. Well, that was the thing I remember talking to you on the first gog about. I was just like, you must have been... DC slash Krypton slash sci-fi's dream of walking yeah. through the door of like, <laughs> oh, this guy's a really good actor. And wait, he knows everything about Superman? Like, wait, what? And like, because you were talking about the quizzes and stuff that you could do on these shows. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's The thing is, I didn't tell anyone that I was a fan until we finished filming the pilot. Because, and I, like, I met David Goyer in my first screen test and the guy wrote Batman Begins. Like, come yeah. on, like, that's crazy. Um, but I didn't want anyone to, to, I wanted to get in on my merits as an actor. And, and, the the fact that I did and then I I also deeply love this world yeah it's the coolest thing ever it really is so with everything that's going on in your life of you know jet setting doing these things making the shows doing are you still actively reading like do you feel like now is it part of the job that you need to be up on DC stuff as well it's 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 I don't think it'll ever be part of the job because mm -hmm. I just I adore it and and I think the the cool thing is that it allows me to engage with it more. Is that I'm going into the DC offices and I'm doing sort of things for them behind the scenes sure. and going into their archives and saying like, hey, this was the first time Lobo showed up and you know it was in Omega Man and, and Omega Man's a really great book and like and I get to meet these people like that's the biggest thing that's changed for me as a fan is I I know these people now. sure like that's that's and that, every time I go to Comic Con I'm not hanging out with the actors and directors I go and find the writers because oh, those totally. are the people who tell my stories oh yeah you know um. But the the good thing about the, the the making things and jet setting and all that sort of stuff is now I save up all the books that I have until yeah. I have a long flight. Yeah, so yeah. LA to London, that's a good 10 hours and I can catch up on everything. So like the next thing that I need, I'm behind for sure, but I've been saving up Mr. Miracle for a very long time. <sighs> You're um, going for a treat. Yeah, I've that's just started and it's, it's, I mean, the way Tom King writes dialogue is just, I just finished Heroes in Crisis. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, I thought that was brilliant as well. Yeah, like yeah. He's, he's so good and, and you know, Clay Man, great artist. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'll always read comics for sure. Hell yeah. Yeah. So now what spurred the move to LA? You were already, you're over there on the shore. Is it just the business? Is it um, the networking? It was, it was just, it was time for a change. You know, I, I thought that, you know, London is, 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 you know, it, it'll, it'll always be, you know, my home and, and I adore London and, and I'll always feel like that's where I belong, but yeah, LA Watch Dogs Legion coming up. Don't worry. You can just bring yeah, it. <laughs> there we go. Um, but uh, LA always seemed like an adventure. Whenever I went out to LA, it always seemed like the adventure. And it and the truth was that it kind of scared me. The mm -hmm. idea of moving to LA was scary um, and still is to a degree. But I always think that's not a bad place to be. If you're sure. looking, I, I was comfortable in London. I was happy and and it was, it was, but happy in a way that was just sort of like, I'm, I'm good here. And I, I was too set in my routines. And I thought, you know, you're in a place in your, in your career where you can do this, you can make this happen. So, so why not? And, 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 go on the next step of this adventure and, and I have and it's been amazing so I'm not an actor and I never mm. will be well you, I mean you've done some very fine voice acting thank you I mean I was in the yeah. movie Laser Team 2 but no big deal yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> for you what does it mean to be a working actor in LA and the star of a show like first off you film don't you film for like six or nine months right yeah we're like six months in in ireland yeah, yeah okay okay and so i assume when season three is getting ready you're gonna go back over mm. there and do that yeah that's the goal yeah, yeah so with the six months you have over here then are you yeah. trying to do other projects or are you just it's it, it's tricky it's okay. it's hard because of scheduling is a, is a big thing and um you know and i don't regret it at all because krypton is the most amazing job and and both as a fan it's awesome but as an actor i love it it's so much fun. The scripts are great. The people I work with couldn't be better. It's yeah. a very, very special thing. Um, but I've lost jobs because of Krypton. Sure. Um, and it, it, that happens. That's that's part of the business. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the goal is when I'm off, I would love to do you know indie film or, or you know animated movie or, or you know I keep just saying to DC like, hey, I would I would voice anyone. Please let me do that. <laughs> uh, or like a Lego game, like whatever. That would sure. be that would be awesome. I would love to do all that sort of stuff. Um, the thing for me at the minute is is finding time and there are a couple of things on the ball um but but yeah no it, it's a pretty delicate dance in terms of finding things that that work uh within the time frame and so uh, for that kind of stuff are you 
auditioning or is it now to the point where this would have to be somebody has to come to you and be like i have this character and it, it's still to the point where i'm auditioning okay. but it's it's more that they understand who i am when i come in the room which sure. is and, and it doesn't make a huge difference to be honest like the, the feel of it is exactly the same that there's not a there's no special treatment or anything um but i like that and, and oh, sure. the, the cool thing is that it's kind of like going back to basics and and the thing is when when you're like krypton is six months it's a six month long job where i get used to playing this character so well and i can play that character you know backwards at this point sure um but it's really really good to sort of stretch yourself and put yourself under pressure in in that way that you might not have been before um uh, or you haven't been you know since before where i got the job necessarily um so no, I enjoy that. That's really really good fun. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. and it's it's definitely a challenge. But and the other thing is that I'm I'm going into the room for some some really really cool stuff. So and I'm meeting new people and stuff. Like that. And the fact that you know because before when I was in LA, it was always like a week or two post Comic Con. Um, so so like I I would I would see a few people and then I would have to leave again. And and now it's like I'm starting to build relationships with these people as well and talking about doing short films and stuff like that. Which That's is awesome. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. What would you say is the biggest change about being in LA? The biggest change about being in LA in terms um, of your day to day life. In terms of my day to day life, I'd say that I'm busier. Mm. Um, you know, I, in London, um, you know, I, I have I have my friends and everything, but but uh, I found that it's not so much a place where you network. Um, gotcha. I, I didn't have that sort of group of people that. Um, like, because at Comic Con and stuff like that, I would always go and meet people, and they're super, super friendly. Um, but then all of a sudden, I moved to LA. They hear that I'm in town, and people want to meet up. Yeah, and they, they actually hit about, you up and want to do stuff, <laughs> which is so crazy to me because I'm used, to, you know, being in England, where it's like, hey, we should do something sometime. Means let's never see each other. <laughs> um, so, so now, now it's different, and people are actually following through. And I'm involved in some really, really cool stuff that I that I wouldn't have been before. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so that's that's one of the biggest changes for sure. Um, and I also met a girl, oh. uh, which was which has probably been the the best and biggest change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like her? Yeah, she's all right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. cool, cool, cool. She's amazing. You'll see later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's Chloe, of course. Obviously, yeah. everybody knows Chloe as well. She's Sports. worked with us a million times. Yeah. So she's on. We have cool friends in two weeks. Yeah. Um, how did you guys meet? We met. Uh, so it was. After Comic Con, uh, my first ever Comic Con, which was amazing. Two years ago, three years ago, twenty seventeen. Okay, yeah, and 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 Comic Con is such a cool place. Like everyone's, you know, very relaxed, and and it. it I was I was saying to, to you guys earlier, it's kind of like summer camp, um, to a degree. It's like where you know you see these people who sort of you meet them once a year and say, yep. hey, how you've been? How's your year? And everyone kind of talks to everyone. It's not stuffy at all. And um, then I went from that, and I was invited to a premiere of an Amazon TV show uh, with my brother and his girlfriend. Um, Alex and Sherry and uh, the sh show uh, didn't last long uh, so <laughs> we went to the screen and um, and there was a red carpet and I was I was in the back with Alex and Sherry and this girl walks down the carpet and I recognized her from love and sex stuff of all things <laughs> and uh, of, of course wrestling isn't wrestling and and, sure. and um, I knew it was Chloe and um, and obviously from her work she's brilliantly talented and funny and smart and beautiful but then she was there in person and this feeling came over me that was just, I'd never had before, which was simply like, I really would like to talk to this person. Sure. And I couldn't explain it. And then she wandered off into the cinema and I thought, well, that's it. I'm never going to see her ever again. And then we went to this after party at the Chateau Marmont, which is, you know, Hollywood establishment. And uh, it was, it was very, and that was very stuffy. Uh, and no one was talking to anyone. And uh, it, it was, it was the complete opposite of Comic-Con and um, I was at the bar with my brother and his girlfriend and um, I noticed that Chloe was there and I knew that like me she was into nerd shit yeah of course so um, I decided uh, you know what why not I want to talk to this person so I turned to my brother and I said a little bit more loudly than I needed to well this is nothing like Comic-Con and Chloe turns around and said you were at Comic Con? I said, Why, yes, I was. <laughs> and um, and we just got to talking, and they completely rescued us because we were just floating around this party. Like, I hadn't made Krypton or anything at sure. that point. So I was, you know, we had no reason to be there. They thought you were like a winner. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take this glass from me, sir. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, but we just got to talking, and, and she was amazing, and there was a really lovely connection. And I just thought, you know, I really want to have this person in my life, uh, no matter what happens. And, um, 
even if it's just a friend, that is a sure. huge win. And uh, we ended up getting out of there and getting burritos, and it was a great night. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we we just stayed friends. We hung out and, and messaged each other on, on Twitter and stuff like that. And I, I came back after Comic Con last year, uh, and we we had drinks again. And it was it was meant to be like a one hour drink. It ended up being like a three hour drink. We were just talked about everything. Yeah. And, uh, that was really wonderful. So I knew that this person was a deeply special person. And uh, but we were both with different people at the time, and nothing was ever going to happen. Um, but I, I, so I went back, and at that point was filming season two. And then my ex girlfriend and I split up in November, and it was totally the right thing to do, and, and done with lots of love and, and mutual compassion. And uh, and uh, but she wanted to move back home, and and uh, and I was doing my career thing so sure it yeah wasn't gonna work out. i can't imagine i mean we'll get to it i'm sure but like yeah. how stressful any of this is on you to like cool i live here for six months and then go to a completely different place yeah where it's just work because yeah, i have a, yeah. i mean granted we own the business or even when i was at ign it's hard enough to go home and turn it off yeah. let alone not have a home like you're going home to the temporary housing you're in or whatever yeah, i mean it's, it's the kind of thing of like when you're there you're just there yeah like all the time and yeah, it's yeah, great yeah. and i love it and it's a blast but it's hard on your friendships it's hard on your relationships sure yeah for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Um, but then, uh, so we, we split in November and then, uh, I didn't want to go back into the dating scene and I didn't really want to do that. Um, but I remember Chloe and we'd kind of been talking and I just sort of thought in January, I was like, I really like this person. And if there's anyone in the whole world that'd want to date, yeah. it'd be her. So just text her. And I, I texted her and, and texting turned into phone calls and phone calls turned into FaceTime. And yeah. uh, it was a really, it was really sort of wonderful and funny because we got on so well and, and we knew the emotional stuff was in place, but I was still in Belfast for two, <laughs> two months. Um, so all the emotional stuff had to come first. And, it, yeah, and yeah. we were practically dating each other over FaceTime for a, for a while. And then, so I came to LA, so wrapped on the second, back in London on the third, LA March 4th and March 4th was my first date with Chloe. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And she brought me home and she hasn't let me leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. She's, yeah, she's the best. Yeah. That reminds me so much, of, you know, Jen and I obviously doing long distance and like yeah. no, knowing, right? Of like, oh, this is different and this is special. This feels and, different. Yeah, and what do we do? Like, I was completely in love with her, you know, b before our first date. It was, it was crazy. Um, but it really was a, a really special moment. Actually, I'd never been more nervous for a first date in my entire life. Yeah. Because like, and we've been talking for months at this point, so obviously it was going to be fine. But I had that worry. It's like, what if we run out of things to talk about? Like, what, what if we get there and it's just, it's just really awkward? And I was literally shaking. I was so nervous. And the thing is, I always say I'm at the perfect level of fame because I'm famous within a five block radius in San Diego one weekend of the year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then everywhere else, I'm sort of nobody and it's sort of great. Um, and I very, very rarely get recognized in the wild. Uh, but someone walked by me and I was I was there. I was like, oh God, it's not going to work out. I'm terrible. She's going to find or? out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bar. And um, someone walked by me and just hey, said, hey, you're Cameron from Krypton, right? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I am. I, I, I got this. Yeah. I'm Superman's grandfather. Come on. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and then the cool thing is she was, the, the, the person who recognized me went into the bar with her friend and was saying in the bar, like, that's Cameron from Krypton. And Chloe just came out and said, she just get recognized. I was like, yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Not wearing um, my sunglasses. But yeah, it went great. And, and we've got three beautiful dogs together. And we rescued a dog recently, um, which is amazing. And she has a beautiful home. And, and I'm so lucky to be a part of it. Yeah. So cool. Aren't you then staring down another six months away from her? Potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. Know. Where are we at? Is Krypton threes? Is that a thing that's uh, going to happen? It, not, nothing confirmed, okay, but okay. you know, we, you know, certainly hope so. You never know no, in this no, industry, yeah, but, course, but there course, are, there are certainly more stories you want to tell for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and regardless of whether or not Krypton comes back, I think that's part of the understanding is that you have to go away and do things. Sure. Um, well, she's obviously understands the entertainment industry as well. A hundred percent. And that, and that's that's where it really is different is that she totally gets it. Yeah. Um, and that's a different kind of thing when there's that understanding. And it's just, and you know, hopefully it's just the kind of thing where, you know, I'm not going to have to choose my career or my relationship oh, sure, in yeah, this yeah. case. Um and I think I, I think it's going to be absolutely fine. You know, I, we'll, we'll manage it, and she's used to it. I'm used to it. And I think we both because we both have dreams that we want to chase in this industry. I think we both understand that this is important. It's something separate, and you should go and do that thing. Which is, and it's wonderful to have that kind of support. So, you have an interesting case, I guess, in terms of this question. But 
as someone who's lived abroad for a while mm. and you know what, what what's your read on america you just moved back to yeah. america right and so it's this different thing for me bringing jen here yeah. right like she's never lived in america yeah, full-time yeah. here she is whereas yeah, yeah. like you obviously did on the east coast yeah well i mean it's uh, and, and i am american like my, my father's american i'm an american citizen and but i definitely i grew up a, away from america grew up in london and, mm-hmm. and lived in ireland and um, do you identify do you feel like an american citizen Whatever that means, I know that's a weird fucking question, but you know what it's, I mean. It's that I I feel like I'm a Londoner. Yeah. Like and more than being British or Irish, I feel like I'm a Londoner. Okay. Because London is a city of the world, and that and my family is from all over the place. Genuinely, like my I've, you know Irish, Scottish, American, uh, Sri Lankan, like genuinely from all over the world, um, and. Uh, and the thing is, London is truly a city of the globe. It's, it's like all cultures are, are there, and, and and that is where I feel at home. Um, but the thing about America, um, to me, and especially like Hollywood, is that there's some there's the good parts of the American dream are still present there. That growing up outside of America, it's this place like this is where people go to if they have dreams that they want to accomplish. Yeah, and. Um, and I know that, I mean, it's, it's a scary time in politics in Britain as well. Um, but I think America was, you know, at the time it was founded, it was a wonderful idea that was, you know, the Constitution of America is, is a, a document that was designed as a work in progress, that this is a country where we change with the times and we can get better. It's the whole idea is about aspiration and, and wanting to be better. And um, and giving back as well, and like yeah. going there, and, and Superman is the story of the American dream. Sure, it's you know, he, he came from the stars, he 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 uh, he grew up in the heartland, this this wonderful environment that said you are special and you 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 have these wonderful gifts that you should share, and he learns that and he gives back, and that was kind of how I saw America was that y- if you have a dream, that's where you go, and and you learn and you grow and you give back and you help make it better Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and unfortunately that's not everyone's idea of the american dream but i always thought america was really cool growing up because also like indiana jones was american sure you know han (laughs) solo was american all these really really cool people that i loved and and then thought were awesome were americans so when we were playing games as kids you know it was we were always playing as americans yeah you know because because that was where superman was from sure so and and to a degree i i always grew up with with that um idea of america for sure cool okay has it been culture shocking to be back after a while no and i, I think i think part of that was that i i i you know i did live in america for you yeah. know, eight years and, and i've always been come back here to do work and stuff like that um and i was i was saying to you guys both of my brothers speak with american accents you know they, they yeah, right <laughs> um uh yeah except they don't get the oh my god you sound just like harry potter comments all the time <laughs> which is super annoying we love it when americans do british accents at us oh it's just my favorite. Um, Listen, you can't have it both ways. Right? <laughs> we think the accent is charming. I'm sorry that Harry Potter is our touchstone. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, Maybe this new Downton Abbey movie will change things for you. Yeah, like, but, well, before that, it was, it was Spice World mm. and Spice Girls. That was our main uh, export to America. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, no, it, it's... It, 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 America also has has, has been, uh, you know, it, it feels familiar as well. Um, I think it's it's definitely the, all the shock comes from the the situation I'm in, which is just crazy and wonderful. Um, but yeah, the, the moving to America hasn't been too difficult. I definitely miss London, but uh, yeah, it wasn't too shocking. Yeah. Compare the Comic Con uh, 2017 to Comic Con 2019. You just did 2017. It was all completely new. Yeah. And um, and it was strange because we'd shot the pilot, um, and this is this is no secret. We reshot seventy five percent of that pilot. It was a very very different show uh, when it was conceived, and you can actually see me in interviews because that was the first time I met our showrunner Cameron Welsh, yeah, um, who was who was going to do the series going forward. And um, I was doing the first half of of one day of press, you know, pitching the show that we were going to make, which was much more sort of Romeo and Juliet in space kind of thing, yeah, um, and then we're sitting in an interview and he says, so like, yeah, Adam Strange shows up and you can actually see me in the interview go. (laughs) 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 I had no idea what was happening. Um, And it's kind of a weird thing, you know, being there when, when the show's not out. Um, But it was great because no one knew who I was and I just got to be a fan and I met all of these really, really cool people. And, you know, I got to hang out with Jeff Johns for the first time, which was just a blast. Yeah. And I think 
the thing that's changed now is that I I do know these people like and I'm I'm talking casually with Grant Gustin and stuff like that and it, and it's definitely like the 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 shock of that of that hasn't worn off but <laughs> and it's still cool but you know it, it's it's some something that I'm more used to now and it's definitely that kind of thing of I I feel I'm trying to have more fun with it. I'm trying to really enjoy every aspect of it that I can, yeah. uh, which was a challenge before and still is always a challenge, but try and enjoy it as much as you can. If a wonderful thing happens, I think it's a very natural reaction to think, I don't deserve this, but just try and have fun with it, you know? Well, I noticed that was my, I think, favorite thing about uh, you and Chloe at Comic-Con this time around. You were cosplaying. Why? Oh, yeah. Casual cosplay, of course. Yeah, but, of yeah. course. Yeah, but oh, that was a really fun jacket. Yeah, your um, Nightwing jacket. We oh, have comments yeah. coming up about the jacket. Yeah, the I get it. There, there's some um, stuff coming. No, that was that was awesome. And it was so fun. And oh, and the thing, one of the things that Chloe's been best at is that she's really helped me be more myself. Yeah. And, and I, I, I think I had a very rigid idea of, of what people expected of me and what they wanted of me. And uh, she said, like, no, but you're way funnier and goofier than all of that. So just do that and be you and really embrace the fact that you love this stuff and show up and cosplay. We'll do we'll do Nightwing and Batgirl one day and we'll do Scott Pilgrim and Ramona Flowers the next. Yeah. And it was just the best. And it was so much fun. And, and that really, really helped me feel like I was even more a part of it and that I was celebrating it even more, which was great. It just it just it turned Comic-Con up, you know, several notches on the down. So now for a Comic-Con for you now being a big time star, right? Yeah, because I, I, I hung out with you last Comic-Con. Yeah. I didn't see it all this Comic-Con. A big time star, a very, very loose definition. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting there. Kevin, is he a big time star? Oh, huge. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> you and my mother agree. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having to like take the the weird cars and the 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 golf carts and the backstage entrances and all this crap or you just walking in with the masses oh just go and do it like yeah. i mean and that's the thing is like, and as i always say i someone wants to come up to me and say hey i'll always take a picture yeah it's totally fine like i, I don't like celebrities don't have to do that it's totally like you know you're not obligated to do that as a celebrity I, I, and i don't think i'm a celebrity but for me i'm always so grateful for all of this and i'm, I'm especially at comic-con like that's where I feel at home is because again, I was a very lonely nerd. So to see all these people out there and, and dressed up in these incredible costumes and, and doing all these things and celebrating this stuff that we love. Yeah. That's awesome. That is amazing to me. So I, I got to walk on the show floor and stuff this year and, and yeah, I was getting stopped and stuff like that, but it's awesome. That's all part of it. And yeah. it's really, really good fun. All of it. So this question is tied to where I'm going after it, but for this comic con. Yeah. What's the standout experience for you in terms of meeting people or somebody you didn't expect to meet or panels or whatever you did parties? You know, uh, what's the memory from 2019 the, Comic-Con? The memory, you know, aside from doing it all with Chloe, that was that was so wonderful to yeah. you know, to to have my partner there with me. That was that was awesome. Um the standout moment there were so many. Uh, and I think I think part of it was that I have a relationship with these people who are my heroes now. So I, I, I showed up at the WBTV mixer and, and Tom Taylor was there. I was like, Tom, how you oh, been? Yeah. Like I saw you last year, like what have you been up to? And you know, chatting with him and, and hanging out with Brandon Routh, who like I loved on the screen in 2006, yeah. you know, like 13 years ago. And, and he's gonna be Superman again. And he's excited about telling me he's gonna be Superman again. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. And like giving Grant Gustin a big hug and like saying like, how was, how was your year? And you know, we're hoping to go back, you know, at some point. And, and, and it, it, talking to everyone about crisis was really cool because like everyone knows stuff. And sure. you know, it, it's, it's just, it's really, really cool doing all of that and, and seeing these people who, in a very very casual sense our friends now sure that that was amazing and also you know uh like driving into comic-con you and jen were the first people that we saw yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, these are all just my friends and like it's it's a good time and, yeah. and i think that was that was a sort of strange and wonderful realization of this year is that it's 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 less new than it was but that's helping me enjoy it even more is is and, and the wonderful thing about knowing you guys as well is that now I have a network wherever I go. Oh sure. So I did a Rooster Teeth video and I was able to say, hey, I know you know Greg and Tim. And, yeah, but remember that you start with us. Sorry. Right? Oh, yeah, Don't do the Rahul was, thing where you're going to use us to leapfrog somewhere. I was you're here. accidentally on an achievement hunter video. You son of a. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't know. Um, <laughs> stay off off topic. Here, here. <laughs> okay. Hey, all right. <laughs> um, and. and I met Troy and Nolan and you know like that was that was crazy like you know, these are people that that I'm walking in the same circles with which sure. is crazy that's that's definitely the standout thing is like this is where I am now and that's crazy to think about so then this is where I was driving being cut from the same cloth as me what was it like to be invited to be on Kevin Smith's podcast 
oh, just so weird, right? <laughs> like it was, so I met I met Mark Bernard in, at Comic-Con last year and um, he, uh, and I said like, I gotta say, I love your work and I adore the podcast. I've been listening for a very, very long time. And um, I think people still get taken aback when they find out that I'm genuinely a fan. Like it's, it's not just that I do the TV show and I've, and I've, and I've, because I think the thing is the, the expectation is that they're like sort of, three kinds of actors when they get a comic book role. There's sort of the people who are totally disinterested and are just there for the paycheck. Sure. And then, which we're thankfully not seeing too much of anymore, but back in the day for sure it was like that. And then there's sort of the second type who are uh, uh, like, hey, I'm gonna really research this and I'm gonna do as much as I possibly can uh, to, to be as good as I can in this role. People like Christian Bale, who wasn't a fan before. Sure. But it's like, yeah, I'm gonna absolutely give everything Understands what they're taking on and wants to be a part of it, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then there's the third type, it's like, I, you know, I, I not like Robert Downey Jr. and a lot of the Marvel guys, like, I wasn't necessarily a big fan before, but I understand that this isn't like another job. This is something that means a lot yeah. to millions of people, and they have a very personal emotional connection with this, and that's special, and I'm gonna take care of this thing. And I'm sort of, the other part of that, like the fourth iteration, which is like, I genuinely was a fan and I loved this stuff and now I'm a part of it. Yeah. And that's still quite a unique thing. And we're seeing more and more of it, people who who loved comic books and now, you know, taking part and, and writing them or making movies. Um, but people are genuinely still surprised. And I think Mark really liked that about me. And then I said like, you know, and, and he said, hey, you should come be on the podcast at Comic-Con. And I totally thought it was the kind of thing where he's just like, he's just being nice. Yeah. Um, but then a year later, I was in LA and it was just before, it was just as season two aired. And uh, he said, do you want to be on the podcast? Just out of the blue. And I said, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, I went on and it was, and it was just, it was wonderful. Cause again, it was the kind of thing of, I've been saving up these conversations for so, so long. And I was there talking about Superman with, with two guys who love Superman, who love comic books. And, yeah. and meeting Kevin Smith was, crazy because i loved his movies growing up so. sure yeah but it's 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 the kind of thing of you know a, a lot of people said don't meet your heroes but i've met pretty much all of mine and pretty much all of them are bloody wonderful people yeah you yeah. got a good moral compass yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like the grandson exactly yeah. like the grandson yeah. no i mean that's that's the thing about it right is that I feel like there's so everybody has a different interpretation of what making it means. And if you're doing yeah. it like, you're like, I don't call myself a celebrity, even though you're clearly a fucking celebrity. Like, you know, you jump around, you do all these different things, but like for those life moments, right? Like I'll never forget. Like when we sat when to talk to Kevin, like when we oh, actually were yeah. in the room with Kevin and then sitting down to do podcasts with Kevin, it was like, yeah, this is insane. And I think that's like, I remember when I first got out of drama school as well, and I was starting to meet people in the industry and, and stuff like that. And, I always just loved movies. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh no, these are also people who like movies. Right, right. And there's a reason they're in this as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And like, so sitting there and talking to Kevin Smith about movies and stuff like that, like just before we went on, yeah. was awesome. And, and like, these are people that you have stuff in common with. And I think, you know, the really, really good people in LA hopefully haven't lost touch of what it is to have that dream. Sure. Um, so yeah, no, meeting these people and talking to them is is wonderful. And the best part of it is that it, as, as crazy it is, as it is for me, it feels kind of natural too, which is because we all love and celebrate this thing. You talked about earlier, like, you know, knock on wood, season three of Krypton. There's a lot more stories mm -hmm. you want to tell. How far out do you know what people want to do? Like talking to the writers, the showrunners, like. I mean, it's, it's, it, it depends. Like in, in terms of like, is it actually happening? Sure. Actors are the last to know. Yeah. yeah. Always the last to know. Similar to Adam uh, Strange thing. Yeah, cool. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, we're the last to know. But in t and the, the cool thing is I have a really wonderful relationship with my, our showrunner, Cameron Welsh, who's just one of the best guys to work with. Um, and he's a brilliant writer and also is a fan, like is a guy who knows this stuff. So um, there are a couple moments this year that I was able to pitch to him. And like there was a, there was a speech in, in episode four um, that I wrote, like and I was able to put in, like I pitched it and I wrote it and then they brought it in, which is awesome. And then, um, and I can, it's it's episode eight this week, but in episode 10, uh, there's a tribute to Christopher Reeve. Nice. And that was my pitch and, and he put it in and stuff like that. And, and vice versa, he sort of tells me ideas for, for loosely where we're going next. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, they have to get approved by the studio and the network. So things can obviously change, um, you know, surprisingly even up to the last minute. Um, like, uh, so, so uh, it, it, you're sort of on your toes uh, a lot of the time, but that's part of what makes it exciting for sure. Sure. Yeah. So then 
one thing you said, you know, you're, you know, hugging Grant Gustin, yeah. you're dropping these names left and right. You're hanging out at the WB TV <laughs> party and all this stuff. When you're talking and getting little, little bits of crisis and what's going to happen in that crossover, how much are you just like, God, I want to do that. Oh, like I would just be a, a guy at the bar. Like I, I would <laughs> happily do that. I would happily do that. I, it, it's just the, the very idea that we're talking about something like that is, yeah. and it was, and I felt that kind of way about, um, end game as well is like sure. it's is it over the top and ridiculous and indulgent absolutely it is and they earned it like it's the kind of thing of like yes we are absolutely going to celebrate this thing that people love and from everything i've heard about it the fans are going to go absolutely wild i hold that hope that you still are in it and you just can't say it and i'm not i'm not looking at you kevin just put it on me just put one shot on me so that way they don't see yeah, it you know I, mean? <laughs> I just i'm saying i hope he's in it and i don't know because i don't know but like that's the thing that gets me so crazy excited for it because in general with the first crossover right when mm. they first started, well, even when they brought in supergirl right and that oh, was on a yeah. different network at the time i was like awesome wow yeah. and you said anything can happen i didn't believe it but then for supergirl to introduce tyler as superman to bring everybody together into the one thing to now have it be yeah brand routes can be superman can yep. become superman burt ward is somehow involved we don't know what part he's playing it's yep. like i'm also holding out hope that they they made uh tom welling understand and he's yep. gonna pop up and like lex yep. is gonna pop up you know rose mom who sucks he's over there somewhere on the wall sucks <laughs> he's gonna pop up like it's like that thing of They've literally done anything can happen. And maybe, I mean, like, you know, I hope maybe this is the next evolution of it and then next year's final crisis. And that's really when it's like, yeah, everybody's in here. Get, get Momo in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, wouldn't that be great? Like, and I, I think that's the kind of thing, too. Like, the funny thing is um, there's a website called Krypton Site, which was a, a, a site that Oh, I know Krypton Site incredibly well, and you just blew my mind that you brought that up. Oh, dude. Because well, that was, was the Smallville it. site. Like, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. the Smallville site. I read it Absolutely. every week. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. yeah. 100% me too. And it, it's been it's been going for a long time. Oh, and yeah. Craig who runs it is a lovely guy. Um and he he covers Krypton as well. And, and you just blew my mind that you brought up Krypton site. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. yeah. No, because like, that that's... is such a nerdy reference that even I because like really when Smallville Sunset it, I was like, all right. And I knew they were still yeah. doing stuff, yeah. but it was like I just stopped checking in. Like the like, Krypton site, Superman homepage, like all of these Jesus. places. Yeah. Like yeah. I was genuinely that kind of fan. And and he uh Craig wrote a joke piece about all the people who are gonna be in crisis. Yeah. And 85 to 90 percent of it is true yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy they're really trying to get everyone which is awesome as they should again yeah. this, you know to bring it back and dovetail at the beginning of the show like that's what's so powerful and it's what people want and like i understand that like you know the movies are doing their thing or whatever but that doesn't mean the sh tv shows can't no. do stuff and it's what i always talk about where it's like when i you know uh being a voice actor right now I, I remember on a panel giving Stephen amell crap because he's like mm. he's arrow right yeah. he is arrow and he's like i would and I'm an actor. I'm not an actor and whatever. So I don't know. But like if they were, I would, I would be beat. If I was Jason Momoa yeah. and I'm Aquaman now, I would be beating down DC TV and I'd be like, I will work for scale. I, I don't, it's not a money. You know what I mean? Let me yeah. come do this. Let me be yeah, a part of this. Always like, a guy at the bar, right? Like, Where it, they just blast through the portal behind me. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> that would be wild. Yeah, like, right? And the thing is like, you know, and it's the kind of thing where, you know, if you know when they make another Superman movie and it's it's back on crypt on the beginning, I would just a technician in the background. That sure. Would be yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I look, I would play Segel happily for as long as they want me to do it because it's a real honor. But I, and I was thinking this that the the one of the cool things for me is that you get to step into this role. But I think the true mark of success for these characters and these stories is that one day you get to pass it on. Mm. And like a dream for me sure. is you know. 30 years down the line, some kid calls me up and says, hey, I'm playing Segel in a Krypton video game movie, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Any words of advice? That's that's what it's all about because the wonderful thing about comic books is that the story continues. Yeah. And the, the way that I feel about it is that Superman means so much to me and your responsibility as an artist when you're working with these characters is to leave it better, better than you found it. You yeah. know, just say like, this is our time, this is our moment with it, but we'll pass the cape on as well. Yeah. So that's that's the goal. Yeah. Leave it better than you found it. And that's, it. I mean, that's, you know, that's what it's all about. And you yeah. get it because you're just like me or whatever, but I remember having that DC encyclopedia oh, and yeah. paging through it as a kid and like when they would talk about the Flash TV show, right? And like, yeah. there will be a Krypton page in the, you know, a DC encyclopedia for years to come. And that's that's crazy and 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 wonderful to think about like the, the the fact i got to you know in episode seven i got to wear the symbol for the first time yeah and seg puts on the superman shirt and does the shirt rip yeah and, uh, i cried that day like that was i got to be a part of a very very small group of people to to wear that symbol yeah um so to be a part of that and to do that is is means more than words can say really you know you're doing good you're doing good <laughs> you know you. who else is doing good kevin 
our sponsors. <laughs> Let me talk to you about Postmates. They wrote copy. I don't even need to get, cut to the one with me, right? That's what we're doing. I don't even need to tell you <laughs> about Postmates because we use it too much. We order from it all the time. I order. You know when I get wing wings delivered to my house? You know where I'm ordering from? I'm ordering from Postmates. Done. When I'm getting the, the Ike sandwiches delivered here, Postmates. Everybody knows I love Postmates. You can go check old podcasts. I use Postmates. What is Postmates? Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever kind of delivery service all year round. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the U.S. and offer delivery from all restaurants, grocery, and convenience stores, and traditional retailers you could possibly want or need. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, Postmates will bring you what you need within the hour. Uh, no more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you download the app for ios or android for free browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery in real time for a limited time postmates is giving our listeners 100 dollars of free delivery credit for your first seven days to start your free deliveries download the app and use code kind of funny all one word that's code kind of funny for 100 dollars of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the postmates app anything you need anytime you need it postmate it Download Postmates and save with the code kind of funny. Our next sponsor is Liquid IV. If you don't know Liquid IV, you have not walked by Andy's desk because he uses Liquid IV every day, but he opens it with his teeth sometimes and he gets the powder in his face. Uh, Liquid <laughs> IV is the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. Uh, trying to drink more water, Liquid IV hydrates you two to three times faster and more effectively than water alone with added bonus vitamin C, B3, B5, B6, and B12. Uh, it's got a give back mission as well. Feel good and do good. Liquid IV has donated 1.5 million sticks to date to places like Haiti, Uganda, Uganda, Puerto Rico, and most recently Nepal. With each purchase you make, Liquid IV donates a serving to someone in need around the world. Liquid IV helps you prevent jack jet lag when traveling. It's TSA friendly and is perfect for on-the-go travelers. Uh, it helps keep your skin hydrated while flying. Can be used before, during, and after flights. That's a great idea. I'm always dehydrated, Kevin, when I fly. I usually land with a headache. I should start using Liquid IV. Liquid IV is the fastest growing wellness brand. You can find them everywhere, even Costco. You can find their hydration multiplier sold at all Costco's nationwide. Uh, Liquid IV fuels tough workouts, helps prevent muscle fatigue, and promotes healthy post-workout recovery. I know nothing about that. Uh, I do love Liquid IV, though, as does Andy, as I already said. And he's got it all over his desk, and you will, too. Right now, my listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when they use the code KFMS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order at Liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com and then remind my code KFMS to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com. Promo code KFMS. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. But yeah, it's embarrassing. I don't know why Andy opens it with his teeth when he gets it out. He, he, it was like one day he was dying out there. I guess like uh, post-workout, your arms aren't working so well. And he No, he's just sitting at his desk. He uh, ate a bunch of hot Cheetos and then he was trying to use the hydrate stuff. I mean, the hot Cheetos, I guess like that's a, you know. It's, Dusty it's, hands. It's, yeah, there you go. Dusty hands. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, Cam, since this is, you're, like, you're kind of like a returning We Have Cool friend. Is there anything you want to know? Anything you want to ask me before we go into the friend zone? What do you got? How you doing? You doing all right? I'm good. I'm great. Yeah, yeah good, I'm good. I'm yeah, yeah. yeah, It's been a good show. You're killing it. Oh, thanks. Uh, I like dude. talking Superman with you as always. Dude, always. We should start our own podcast yeah you know what i mean yeah. just that the superman returns, the superman podcast. returns podcast just talk about brandon Roth. do you want a fun brandon Roth story yes please i don't think i've ever told it on the air kevin i'm gonna say that and you correct me if i've ever done it all right because it was a question i wanted to ask i wanted to, I, i've worked with brandon Roth once mm. he came by 2015 when we were doing the game spot stage he came through during e3 because we it was like game spot was doing the hey we got the developers you do the crazy stuff so that's when we had cisco and devin sour for the first time in brandon Roth. and so Brandon got there and he was running. It was like a pain to get there, obviously, because it's E3. Something else had happened. We were late. He was whatever. We didn't have as much time with him. And so I, I had one question I never got to, which I wanted to ask him. So, you you know, you're back. This is just when he was starting back up with Arrow and all that oh, stuff, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Doing yeah. Adam stuff. And it was I wanted to be like, so what's like your craziest experience with the press? Because I think it might be me. Yeah. And he doesn't know it yet. And I never got the question or whatever happened. It didn't happen. And then I haven't worked with him since. He's still, we'll still talk through Twitter mm -hmm. once in a while. But like way back in the day, Superman Returns is getting ready to come out, right? Uh, they've cast Brandon Routh. All I'm hearing about from when I'm reading these articles and interviews about him and this, that, and the other, and how, why he got picked for the role is that he is Clark Kent pretty much, mm -hmm. right? From Iowa. He's, you know, he's a Midwest guy yeah. raised in a farm town yeah. all this stuff. Can't attest. Like, he just walks into a room and he is Superman. Like, he's the nicest guy. Like, he's, he's got, he's big and muscly and everything, but like, yeah. he just exudes that warmth and kindness. So, what I did was I'm a reporter at the Columbia Daily Tribune. Of course, I want to get into video games, IGNs, GameSpots, all that stuff, nerdy stuff. Uh, I had a contact at Wizard 
Wizard magazine that I would pitch uh, stories to every so often. And so I'd already gotten something published in Inquest by this point. And so I knew them a little bit and I pitched them a, a thing of like, so what about this piece? Superman Returns is coming up. Everybody keeps saying this kid's Clark Kent and he's from Smallville pretty much. What if I went there to his hometown in, uh, in Iowa, right? And I interviewed his parents and went around there and did the whole Smallville thing. And they were like, yeah, we're green lighting this. This is 100% something that you, I mean, like you got to make it all happen, obviously. And da, da, da. I'm like, no problem. And I was like, there was a weekend I was eyeing where I could drive up there from Missouri, do it Iowa and drive back and forth. It would be like out of five hours or whatever. But I was like, I got this. And so then it began, uh, and again, keep in mind, this is before uh, the internet's where it is now, the intense voter registration lookups and this, that, and they're trying to pin down his family, right? Of like, who are his mom and dad and where can I get, not creepy, this is journalism, buddy. This is so, journalism. It sounds like Charlie Day with the cotton yep, on the wall. Yep, 100%, yeah. 100%. But I, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I find his mom and his dad. And I call his mom and his dad and have separate conversations with each of them of like, hey, I would like to come up and I'm doing this and my name's Greg and yada, yada, yada. And I, I, the only thing they said no to when I was like, can I just stay in your house? <laughs> can I stay in your house for that weekend to get a feel for it? And they're like, well, no, but you can come over and you can see the house and you can do it. And like, we'll show you around and we'll go to the thing. We'll do it. And his mom, I think, is a teacher and like, well, yeah, or was and we can go to school. And I'm like, awesome. Great done booked locked i'm gonna do this and the next day i came into work and i sat down and i picked up my phone and it was flashing a voicemail at the tribune and i hit it and it was i guess i don't know, brandon's manager or pr person furious <laughs> of like i don't know who the fuck you think you are you are not coming to their house and hang out and like this is not how journal this is not how hollywood press works you have to go through us and yada and i was like all right delete the message hang up <laughs> email back to the wizard i'm like this isn't happening like that's oh. not a thing but i can only imagine i was so i was so young obviously and naive to how any of pr mm. works the mm. fact that it never even dawned to me that i would have had to probably go through his manager or this that, yeah. other and then though the fact that his parents were so naive to how Hollywood works that a, stra were, yeah, a stranger, a stranger, twenty-two year old kid from Missouri calls and is like, "Yeah, they're like, yeah, sure, come yeah, sure, on by, yeah, 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 sure, we'll help well, our son promote his movie." It, well, and that's what I want to know from his side is what the call he got from his parents. What were. was that? Were yeah. they excited or were they mystified? And then was he like, "What the hell?" <laughs> Too fair, it's a very mom and pa can't move. Exactly. Yeah, come on over. That yeah. was my thing. Is even though I blew up, I was like, "Man, they still are very much the Kents. It is still that's very much awesome. that thing." Yeah. yeah. And I, I got to say, Brandon very much is that sort of guy. He gets it. He yeah. really, really gets how important it is. And he loves it. And it was it's sort of funny. We, we went to the EW party and we were dressed as Scott and Ramona. And of course, he was in Scott. Yeah, Brogan of course. Well. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got a kick out of that. It was fun. He's yeah. The nicest guy. And I, I genuinely couldn't be happier that he's, he gets to be Superman again. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's time for you, Cameron Cuff, to enter the friend zone. Let's this do is it. where Kind of Funny I've Best Friends. I've been there before. <laughs> right in to <laughs> patreon.com slash kind of funny with questions for our guests. Uh, Dustin Cunningham starts it. Hey, Cameron, I loved you in season one of Krypton. Thank you. My question is, if you could be any superhero in the DC Universe films other than Superman, who would you want to play? That's the, just the hardest question because there are do so many characters I want to be. Uh, I can... I can I'm not ready for it yet. Give me, give me ten to fifteen years. Uh -huh. But Constantine, that would be, oh, be so that would much be fun. awesome. You in the trench cap? That'd be great. That'd be White such a blast. Like, Hell yeah. That'd, that'd be and like there's the, he's in that sort of moral gray area of the DC universe. He's neither hero nor villain. He has such a, a complex emotional relationship with so many of these other characters, and he occupies his, very much his own space in that in that sure. world. I think that'd be such a fascinating story to play. Uh, more in immediately, Nightwing would be pretty cool. You got the look, dude. You know I what would I mean? want to do it. That would be so cool. I would. I would love to do you that. in that jacket. I was like, I see it. I see the Dick Grayson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I walked right in front of the DC execs on purpose wearing that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, you like drop a battering? Like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> My <laughs> scrimshaw sticks fell. <laughs> My domino mask is here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I kind of like that one. Ignacio Rojas writes in, and I, I think it, stick with me because it's something we kind of talked about, but mm. I want to iterate on it. For sure. Uh, hey, hello, Cam. How's it going? I'm well, mate. How are you? I'm sure Ignacio is fine. He's probably Get in the chat, actually. Uh, I want to know, with you having to film Krypton in Europe, great show, by the yep. way, Thank you how much. do you and Chloe manage on having a long-distance relationship? Uh, anyways, keep being awesome and uh, keep being awesome and one of the best actors out there. Oh, wow. That's very, very kind and very, very untrue. Um, I... I um, so for the start so, of the relationship, yeah. or at least, yeah, it was yeah. start of the relationship. Well, the funny you thing were is abroad. we kind of started 
long distance, really. So this um, is just weird being around each other. It's, huh? so this it's, is overrated. It's, just, it's not natural. Um, no, it, so, so we we started there, and and I I think it's it's we're sort of comfortable in that space, and I think part of it is is really just doing your best to support your partner. I think anyone who, and you don't have to be in this industry to do long distance, everyone sort of goes through it at some point. Um, but it's about trying to support your partner and, and she she's a really, really brilliant screenwriter and, and you know has a film uh, in, in pre-production in the UK and um, we've got dogs and I might potentially have to stay and, and take care of them. I was going to say that would be fucked up if it switches the other way. She yeah, goes abroad. Yeah, but, th- but that's something we totally expect and hope sure. for and it's the kind of thing of like... You Throughout know, your career, I'm sure this is going to happen multiple times to both of you. Well, I, and I hope so. I think, I think and that's the thing is, is you, you hope for these things for your partner and I know that she's supportive of me and, and wants me to do as well as I possibly can and um, I think that's really the trick is, is make it about supporting the other person and being there for them. Good answer. Kale Dolphin Corn writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Hey guys, question for Cam. What's it like having a beard so sexy that uh, it's the second autocomplete result when Googling your name? Is it? Apparently. You that's pay- so funny. I got really attached to that beard, no pun intended. Because that's how you start um, season two. <laughs> you started with, yeah, seg- with, se- the, start with, with the beard. Coming yeah. out of the Phantom Zone with the beard. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, you were like, when we were getting ready to do the RTX, RTX London panel, yeah, we, yeah. No, nothing season two had happened or been shown yet. You're like, yep. don't ask about the beard. I was like, all right, yeah. cool, whatever. We, I won't we, ask about the beard. We there it is. Oh, now it's not. Well, yeah, it's number there one it according to that. Yeah. <laughs> Network. Cameron, Cameron Cuff, much. beard, then age, <laughs> net worth, Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know if I could grow a beard, honestly. It yeah. was the kind of thing of, of a Comic-Con... Uh, last year, my showrunner came up to me afterwards, afterwards and said, hey, could you grow a beard? And I was like, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, <laughs> Let's see together. <laughs> and it, uh, we'll discover together. And uh, the funny thing that I noticed was was two things. The first was that people took me a lot more seriously when I had a beard. Yeah. I would make suggestions on certain people. Be like, yeah, yeah, it seems like he knows what he's talking about. He's, he's got, got a beard. He's got a beard. Yeah. He's a man. Um, <laughs> he's and an then I, I shaved my beard and everyone was like, oh, look, yeah. he's the cute little boy. Yeah. And, and I lost all of my gravitas and credit. <laughs> Um, but uh, the other thing I noticed was there is a practical element to having a beard. And in, in Belfast, it's not overly cold. It's not like Arctic. It's not like Canada or anything. But you get a very, very strong wind from the sea coming sure. in. Um, and it's really, really good for blocking the wind. Um, my face got really, really cold, you know, filming outside after that point. So I, I missed that beard. It was very, very cool. Write it back in, somebody. They there have you go. to. There you go. I mean, that was that was the, the joke. With, we actually ended up, um, when I shaved it off, we shaved it off in stages. Just to see what it would look like. Sure. So yeah, I had yeah. like General Zod sort of seventies beard. I had like a massive pictures. mustache and a, the the Shakespeare beard. Yeah. Like that was really really good fun. Oh, there are pictures. They shall never be seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kerr writes in and says, Cameron, where did you get that sweet night wing jacket from? I I got it. Kevin, for- if you want to go to my Twitter, that's the tweet I put up promoting uh, Cam and Chloe on. Oh, God, I feel terrible because I forgot the name of the company. It was custom made. I th- I believe it was called Luca Jackets, Luca Designs. I'm. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll post it on social media, and that way people can find out. Because I know you a can, lot of you people can want sh- to know. We can when we do friend zone with Chloe. You can shout it out. Yep, I'll, I'll do, do that. His way yeah. to, all right, cool. So Perfect. two weeks, you'll know on this show. Everything else. My Twitter. Oh, that's Instagram. Yeah, it sure is. Don't, I understand. I'm verified on Congrats both. Congrats on the verification. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Lots changed for me since you were last year too. <laughs> verified on Instagram, and. uh Put a little weight on. <laughs> you know, I mean, not riding the bike as much as I should be. There it is. That's there a great is. jacket. It's a great, and the, you know what's great is that it's perfect for Comic Con because it's not real leather, which means oh. it's not heavy. It breathes. Um, so you know that's a. And the thing I like about I was I was saying to to uh, Kevin uh, um, is that Halloween is not a big holiday in the UK. Like yeah. some people dress up sometimes and there's nothing I hate more than showing up fully dressed up. And nobody's there. And no, no one's there. So, uh, but and the thing is, if no one knows, that's just a cool jacket. True. Like, that's a good yeah, point. That's yeah. great. But don't worry. I mean, Halloween, like you're, you're here again. I'm here now. You hopefully be. First off, too, let's bring this to the table. We haven't talked about this. Have you seen this petition that's going around to move Halloween to the last Saturday of October every year? So no longer would it be the 31st, just the last Saturday of the year. Guys, get out of here. Why? Because then kids aren't out on a school day. I, I people aren't drinking. It's or just... Party it's, I, here's what I'll say. I'm 100% for this. Let's. Get, I think we should get away from the 31st if, if this can happen. Because oh, remember being... I remember being a kid walking in like... I don't even remember. I think it was like probably December one year. And being like, guys... I looked at the calendar. Halloween is on a Saturday this upcoming year. Well, like, that, we got to plan and strategize. But don't take but, away from that excitement. You know what I mean? But Let also, those kids come together and make 
strategy. I like to throw that. Halloween parties. I can't throw one when that's it's a, a Thursday. But that's, you that's, did that last year when uh, it was Wednesday. That, that's the point I was going to make is that if it is during the weekday, you get to throw one on the weekend before or after. Mm-hmm. Is that you get yeah. to extend Halloween that's a bit the more. Rules. I like just it. get drunk on a Wednesday. You guys just gotta let it get, get let it, and then you gotta come to work the next day. And then I'm gonna hear about how hungover you were all day. Oh God! Yeah. God, bear! I took bear drinking one day. I gotta hear about that for a week. This young kid can't drink. I don't understand. He's 24. He was so drunk. Why was he so hungover the next day? Because of the alcohol. Well, I, sure. Okay. Uh, Alec Bobco writes in to the friend zone and says, Cameron. What was it like working with Jeremy and Trevor on the Mario Maker 2 episode of Ready, Set, Show? Also, cool Nightwing jacket. Oh, thank you very much. Keep in mind, uh, they can't see each other talking, so it's weird the two Nightwing jacket things bumping up together. <laughs> <laughs> um, super fun. It was awesome. Again, I apologize that I was on an achievement hunt. You're welcome to. This was actually a, a very sore subject. So maybe see, it's that thing. On. We could let it slide <laughs> if you were know. wearing any kind of funny stuff. But you weren't. Well, I wasn't. You know what I mean? I it's like the first time you put up a photo with you and Rahul, you were in the kind of funny hat. So it's like, yep. even though Rahul Kohli, dead to us, the traitor, the, the enemy, in it? You know? The, the cool thing, especially the animated series Nightwing, that's kind of funny blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, I, yeah. Look, I, was, I was holding it Oh, there, that's, you know? you're trying to twist it. I'm trying to twist it. All right, I Retros- appreciate that. I don't buy it for a second, but <laughs> I appreciate the twist there. Yeah, okay. Uh, FNH Paul says, Cameron, what was the most surreal moment you had on set or do, doing press for Krypton? Bonus question. Will you be at the KF London meetup? Would love to see you again. Hashtag KFA for streamies. Uh, it's it's November. November. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, um, hopefully, you know, uh, should, should, should Krypton come back? Yeah. Um, uh, we should be filming around them. So okay. if I can come back from Ireland, I, I would love to. That'd if you need me to come up and be just at a Krypton bar in the background, I'll do that too. That'd be really fun. And for the record, I'll do that. I'll cancel anything I have to come do that at any point. Just a heads up. I'll quit this job if I have to. You want me to quit? (laughs) Tell me right now. We'll talk. We'll talk. Um, uh, The most... The most surreal. I mean, every, every day. It, it's. It's. I, mean, I know that's a very sort of. Um. You know. Uh, tired answer, but it, it. It. genuinely is true. Every day is crazy. Uh, I. I would say in season one, at the end of the pilot episode, there's the scene where Adam hands Seg Superman's cape. Yeah. And it's the Christopher Reeve cape, and um, he. Uh, he says, you know, this belonged to your grandson. This was everything that was good and true and noble about your family. Yeah. Um, and it's up to you now. Um, and being there, standing in the set of the Fortress of Solitude, being handed that cape and holding that cape, uh, that was, you know, that was like someone saying, like, you're the storyteller now. You've been reading these for so long, and now you're a part of it. So <laughs> don't fuck up. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, genuinely being past that cape, that was one of the most surreal and wonderful moments of my whole life. How much do you love posing with capes now? Because I see a lot of photos of you with the cape. It's the best. It's really, like, I, keep, I keep saying to camera, I, like, I should get a cape at some point. We yeah, need, exactly. We need to bring those back. I agree. And the final question goes to Amy Gilroy. And this is the Daily Double because she's Amy asking Gills. you and... Ew, go ahead. Oh, you know um, her. Hi, hey, Everybody knows Amy Gilroy, right. of course. Yeah. Uh, she's asking both you and Chloe on your episodes. Gotcha. So you get to go first, though. If you could click your fingers and immediately learn a skill, what skill would it be and why? Oh, that is Juggling. A great Juggling, question. says Kevin. I'd say piano. Tried to learn so many times. Uh, I know how to juggle. Uh, benefits, well, benefits of dr- in my face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> benefits, it's like oh, I learned it in a dream. <laughs> benefits of drama. Uh, benefits of drama school for sure. Uh, oh god, there are two I go back and forth on. Sure. One, I'd love to be really, really good at playing piano. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Yeah, he right? Just copied Greg's answer. He it, did, but no big deal. Sorry, dude. It's okay, I didn't mean it. Uh, but no, I think about the, like when you go to a bar and there's one sitting there, or you're killing time yeah. somewhere, and they're like installations. Just, if you just go, that, that's just so cool. Just, just to be able to. Yeah. 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 I should just learn. You this. just learned like, oh, that's yeah. called a thousand miles. <laughs> if I just learned the one song, yeah, I'd be fine. <laughs> Uh, but the, the the big one and the one I think I'd want most is a, I'd love to be able to click my fingers and learn Spanish. Oh, that wow, that'd would be, be helpful. Fantastic, because I love to travel in so many countries in South America speak Spanish. And, sure. And it would be so cool. It's a beautiful language. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to learn, and I'm very, very lazy and bad at it. Um, mm, mm, but I, mm. I would love to be able to click my fingers and just know that'd be so cool. See, that's why in school, when I'd be failing a test and I'd be like really upset about it, like I'd always think about how cool it would be to have the meteor man powers. Because remember Meteor Man? Meteor Man, one of his abilities was if he touched a book, he could oh, remember man. everything in the, he would know everything in the book for like 15 seconds or whatever. Yeah. And you might say that's not enough for a test, to which I would tell you how I would do it. I've thought this through as a kid. <laughs> I would drop out of the school I was going to because I was going to a private school, obviously, mm-hmm. or a uh, Catholic school. So like, this wouldn't work there because of the uniforms, mm. but then I'd enroll in a public school. And you know who I'd be, Kevin? I'd be Sandals guy. 
why is it you always wearing sandals in the Chicago uh, winter? <laughs> it's because I have my books underneath my desk, and I can pop off my sandal, put it on the book, and then take all the tests. Genius. I've thought this through, guys. True you know genius. what I mean? That's why I would never get me your man's abilities, because I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of them. I, use them. What is I would argue that makes you, you the most worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up with a plan like that. What is I wanted to ace the test and be able to play games longer and I guess save people with Meteor Man abilities if that's also something I would have. Who is Meteor Man? I've never heard of him. Meteor Man? Uh, what, it was Robert Townsend a uh, superhero movie back in the day? You should look it up. A meteor crashes, he, he touches it and gets powers. But why only it's kind of like seconds? a comedy. That, seem, that seems like such a... I'm sorry, what? Why only 15 seconds? Because like it was kind of a comedy. He, he was a comedian. It was, it was a comedic take on superhero movies and they weren't even a thing yet. It was very much... You know, like here's this goofy thing you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. I mean that for a long time that was what superhero movies were. Sure. As well. Yeah. You know, like the the oh, remember they were talking like even in 2008 they're talking about the the Jack Black Superman uh, uh, Green Lantern movie. Oh god, right? Remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, thankfully they made it with Ryan Reynolds and it was great. Yeah, thank God that took off and it that was, did everything we yeah, needed to. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is Ben. We have cool friends. This is my cool friend and yours, Cameron Cuff, a kind of funny best friend. He'll be listening to the podcast and hearing everything we talk about some for some reason. Always. You could be doing anything else you want with your life. And this is what you do now. <laughs> no, you, got, you guys have been my friends for a long time. We will for a long time as well. Everybody watch Krypton, of course. Sci-fi. Please do. Check it there. 10, 9 central on Wednesdays. I forget. Uh, season one is obviously out. You can buy it and all that stuff, but it was, it was streaming on something internationally for a while right so so it's also on the dc universe app season one is okay um uh and also you can you can buy it on amazon itunes all that okay. sort of stuff uh and internationally it's on on various i think it's on channel four in the uk and ireland yeah right. well cameron i love you very much i love you too man thank you for your time thanks so much for having me until next time ladies and gentlemen it's been our pleasure to serve you <laughs>